A newer, cheaper way to deliver packages has run afoul of the law in Brevard County. Officials have ordered 10 small delivery businesses to shut down. West News' Dan Billow is on Merritt Island. And Dan, have a lot of people complained about these deliveries? Yeah, only a few, Jim. For example, no one complained about the delivery service operating out of this driveway using that very small trailer back there. But because county government is obligated to investigate and act on all complaints, package delivery by golf cart has just been banned. Turns out what looks like an innocent UPS package delivery service is illegal. It's a zoning violation conducting commercial business in a residential zoning. I saw North Grove. Yeah, North Grove. Ten homeowners in Brevard County have been doing the same thing. Some had pods in their driveways to hold the packages. All had golf carts with UPS logos to distribute them. It's a cheaper way for UPS to deliver parcels. UPS has been doing this for three years all around Central Florida. One out-of-work stockbroker says he got his house out of foreclosure with his UPS pay. But now those driveways and garages in which people have been picking up a little extra income are empty. The pods and the golf carts are gone for the most part. The code enforcement chief says the deliveries likely would have continued, but a few people complained. We didn't uh, uh, become aware of it until this past week when we started receiving complaints. And for the second time in an hour, another UPS truck has pulled up here. The big brown truck will be delivering the packages now instead of the golf carts. Brevard County's order shuts down the golf cart delivery services only in the unincorporated areas of the county. However, it looks like UPS is going to pull all their golf carts even out of the cities, and so that'll shut down another dozen or so people. We're live on Merritt Island. Dan Billow, West 2 News. Dozens of residents are speaking out against UPS setting up those delivery pods in their neighborhoods. The county commission is changing an ordinance that would make those pods legal. As Channel 9's Bianca Castro reports, now a state senator is getting involved. Our cameras caught the driver of this UPS golf cart break the law when he drove the wrong way on a one-way street. He's set to deliver the packages you see on the trailer. Watch as he gets stuck turning into the Sanford neighborhood. I don't want those in my neighborhood. Antoinette Ashby was one of dozens who pushed the Seminole County Commission Tuesday to pass new restrictions on the UPS holiday delivery method. The company uses golf carts to deliver packages, which it stores in pods. We've shown you UPS pods in people's front yards and packages packages flying off the trailers. Ashby worries about her elderly mother. What if a package fell off and caused her to run? The county's new rules prohibit UPS from using residential properties and open trailers. In Seminole County, Bianca Castro, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. I thought that was interesting. I, I, hadn't, I didn't know about this. I don't have it. At least I haven't seen it in my neighborhood. but. Uh, but anyway, I won't be supporting it, but we can go through all the cards. Uh, Janet Mason? Good. Hi. Um, I'm Janet Mason. Sean Mason was my husband that was up here. Um, six years ago, I was a UPS driver. I left on my own. I didn't get fired. <laughs> but the um, reason why I came is it was my son that got ran off the road. God bless UPS. They made money. They're still making money. And I'm happy because a lot of businesses are not. They're a good company, but when it comes to this time of year, it's like they lose their brain. I don't know what it is because when I was a driver, we had to do safety questions regularly to go over safety issues where these people, they're hiring college students, they're hiring next door neighbors to supervisors, they're hiring whoever. Um, Another thing that is very concerning, in the pods, it has a placard that says no gasoline-operated vehicles are to be parked in there, much less containers stored in there. So if you have these containers in a neighborhood and you have a de-restricted neighborhood, say a kid or somebody is playing around on it or whatever, the neighborhood's insurance is going to be responsible for somebody getting hurt on one of these containers because they're wanting to park it in common grounds or whatever where the kids play and what have you. Another issue is these packages falling off. They're not supposed to be giving these guys packages with medications or what have you in it. Um, the drivers have to be 21 years old to deliver a lot of these packages and have to get signature. But still, if they fall off the cart, a lot of these packages are not even, um, some of these companies forget to label them properly or just don't label them properly. So you've got heart medications, you've got alcohol, you've got 
um, all kinds of um, paraphernalia, sexual or whatever, that comes from these shops being delivered to homes. And you don't want your children, we don't want them not to be able to do business. It's wonderful, but it's got to be safe for our residents. That's what we're here for, and that's what you guys are here for is the residents, not their bottom line. And their bottom line is not going to replace a child's life. There was a trailer that came unhitched, and I can't remember, I think it was Lake County. It came unhitched from a truck. It wasn't a UPS trailer, but this is just an example. It came unhitched, went off the side of the road, and killed three children. I don't care, you can call the Sheriff's County Department out to take care of a code violation or anything, but no bottom line or police officer is going to replace a child's life or any human being's life. Then it's too late. So I just think you need to take into consideration if you can allow it. There needs to be a lot of safety rules set forth and they need to comply. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. But I did want to point out, in addition to the zoning issue that uh, Ms. Sabrina raised with regard to the commercial operation and a residential zoning, to my knowledge, and, and I don't know much about this, I just found out about the issue today, but it sounds like these locations don't have business tax receipts either, and the code is pretty clear that there would be a business tax receipt requirement, so that there appears to be a violation there as well. In fact, to the extent that the operation is occurring without a business tax receipt, it's clearly a violation of that provision uh, of the codes as well. Oh, I'm sorry, did you have a question? Here. Yes, Morris, on that same, because of that violation, how about the residents who are actually renting out for $100 their garage? Are they in violation of our code? They are uh, they're at a minimum in violation of, to the extent they're in a residential zoning district and they're doing the commercial there, um, they're in violation of the zoning codes and Depending on how you look at it, either the resident or UPS could be in violation of the business tax receipt requirement. Just off the cuff looking at it just for an hour this afternoon, my guess is that, uh, or it looks like UPS is in violation of the business tax receipt requirement, the resident is in violation of the zoning code. Hello. Good evening. My name is Anna Johnson and I reside at 1420 Bridgeport Circle, Rockledge, Florida. I have a few pictures in closing that I want to show the public yeah, um, of UPS blatantly um, violating the law. Um, this first one is um, 645 Theodore Drive in Merritt Island. They're running a business out of a garage. Um, Fox News covered this last night. When the garage wasn't enough, they set up a pod. And it, um, excuse me. by the time um, the code enforcement officers got out there, they had already moved it to 1420 Eddy Street around the corner. So they're just playing chess with our code enforcement officers. It's like, you know, let's try to move them before they get out there. Um, this is a Rockledge in my city. Um, packages being left unattended outside of a garage. And I wouldn't want my package sitting out there. <laughs> this is um, right across the street from City Hall on Coco. Temporary structure, no permit, golf cart. No. <laughs> mm, this is um, Buckboard Drive in Vieira. Packages are sitting in the garage. You notice the gas tank there. Um, I'm sure that's some kind of violation of fire department. <laughs> uh, this is Coco, running a business out of a garage on Mallory Court. No license. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you for your time. You did good. Sean Mason. Right now you have a UPS supervisor here, a center manager from, oh, by the way, that first video you saw, the uh, African-American gentleman in the passenger seat going the wrong way, that was a UPS supervisor. His name is Antoine. He drives out of the Sanford Center. That was taken the same day of the Simlo County Commissioner meeting on November the 8th. He's the one supposed to be training this guy, and he's going down the wrong way, waving at the camera, and running over cones. This is what goes on. There's no proper training done. A normal UPS driver goes through two weeks of school, that's 80 hours, and then has a month probationary period. Your normal UPS driver now has at least seven, eight years' experience. You're putting kids on the road, including here in Brevard just the other day. They had an 18-year-old kid without a driver's license driving for several weeks by the name of Colleen Murphy. Matter of fact, I think he rode with Anna's husband. The other day they finally realized he didn't have a driver's license, had to pull him off the road. 
So here you got Mr. Williams stating at Seminole County, we, don't, we check all of our guys, they all have driver's license, we do background checks, and here you are in Brevard three weeks later with a non-licensed driver driving in your neighborhoods. I mean, that's just, I could go on and on with all the examples that are going on. I mean, this company made $1.6 billion last quarter. If anything, they're robbing Brevard in every county in the state of not only the impact money, but they normally rent rider trucks this time of year. So all that tax money that comes off that, that's all part of it. Do you want me to click it? Oh, there we go. There's a gasoline stored in there. Mr. Williams claims they're not doing that anymore, but yes, they are. Here's more. That's one that I think they came out and they filmed the other day, I'm guessing, by the, what I saw on Fox News. Uh, that looks like six to eight packages to me, according to Mr. Williams. And then you've still got all the packages in the uh, trailer. This is one over in Orlando in the front yard. This one was violated two years in a row. This is Orange County. This is a UPS employee's house. He was cited last year, and his, his, he gets paid $400, $500 for this. He stated, I'll leave it there to the last day. And then when code comes to get me, I'll pull it out the last day, and then they do it again the next year. So he was cited last year. Mr. Williams stated they haven't had any problems, but this year, that's a two-year deal right there with Orange County. That's Winter Park Pines, Katie Way. This is in Baldwin Park where Senator Martinez lives. That is a trailer that came unhooked when I was out there watching this one. It came unhooked in one week five times. The hitch pins are not commercial, and the weight, and when it jerks, it comes on. And they actually, Channel 9 had that on video, by the way. There was a, that was one of the five stories. This was yesterday. Similar County, that's the new box that they've made to enclose their packages in. As you see, the tires are going flat from the weight of it. That's plywood with two side doors. Uh, they don't have locks, according to Similar County. In the November 8th, Mr. Williamson agreed to put locks on the side panels. It looks like a dog wagon. It can open up from both sides. That's the driver, passenger. And then the supervisor is the one down by the cop car who was supposed to be getting ticketed because they don't have any lights or signals. That thing is so big, this picture doesn't do justice. If you go to put it in a pod, it has six inches on each side. You need to wrap And up. you have to climb over the top to get in and back it out. Let's see. You need to wrap that up. All right. So I'm in, I'm, I think anybody in any county state of Florida should not allow this. UPS, like I said, has done this 105 years without any problems. They don't need golf carts out on the public roads or pods in neighborhoods. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yes. You, you know, this is a, a land use zoning change, and you got to have a advertise it in two public hearings. There's no way to do this <laughs> immediately, anyway. I mean, so we can't even pass this if even if we the board wanted to. So, and I don't think I don't see three votes to to allow this to happen anyway. So, uh, I, I think we're at a point where we could probably move this. Okay, that was our last cards to the board. I make. I mean, I don't. Know. What is the request? To, uh, well, well, we can't even make a change because yeah. it's a change to the our court of ordinances, which we have to legally advertise. So, we in have order, two hearings, we have two public hearings. So, we're not permitted to make any changes to our ordinance under uh, public comment. That's yeah. just the law. Right. So, you guys can't do this in Brevard County. Maybe next year, if you want to come forward and get an ordinance change. That's fine, but we're going to have a lot of questions for you. If you do it, though, too, and I'm going to ask, uh, I don't know if it's, I think, code enforcement and sheriff department, but there's a, there's a, you know, a $500 a day fine, and I'm going to ask that we make sure we enforce that and, and ask the sheriff department to do that if they're already set up in neighborhoods uh, today. And I'm, I understand that they are in the county. And uh, it could also be a 60-day jail period. I am shocked that UPS is a great company, and I've got some friends that work for UPS is allowing this um, to tarnish their image. I, I just I don't I don't get that one because you UPS is really a good company, sir, and I know you guys do a good job and appreciate what you do, but this is a I don't I don't understand this one. Okay. Commissioner Bolin. I agree with uh, Commissioner Fisher, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, one is that we cannot do anything because of the time element, but the second thing is they are in violation, and also the residents who are participating are in violation. And I don't want it to go on in the communities. I've had a lot of interaction with the community people I have in District 4, and we want it done, we want it out, and I want it gone tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. How do I do that? What can I do, Morris? As you know, our typical code pro enforcement procedures, which provide for notice of violation and opportunity to cure and all those things, those are aimed at residents of the county who are there long term and uh, give them time to cure. For something like this, we've got two provisions that would seem to apply. Um, it looks like there's a violation of the business tax receipt requirement by UPS at each of these individual locations, and that's up to a $500 uh, a day fine. 
or up to 60 days jail time under the code. It's a violation of section 10227 county code. For the zoning violation, which would apply to the residents who are allowing this on their property, it's the same penalty. It's up to a $500 per day fine and or 60 days in county jail, and that's under section 621105, Brevard County Code. Uh, code enforcement wouldn't administer that. That would be administered by the sheriff. So someone would have to contact the sheriff. Um, I had an initial conversation with the sheriff this afternoon to see how they would handle it. Typically what they would do for a vote violation of this nature is that they'd issue a notice to appear. They could require uh, the resident or a representative of the corporation to appear in court. Uh, they could even arrest someone for a continuing violation on the spot. But um, the penalties could add up pretty quickly at $1,000 a day total per location. So you're saying that we could put uh, everyone on notice right now that the violation exists and that it will be enforced? Um, the, what, we, what I'm worried about is that because this is seasonal, it's a, we got a short window of time, we need to shut it down as fast as possible because giving them notice, getting this, and could go on for weeks. How can, how can I do that? To avoid it being dragged out like that, instead of treating it as a normal notice a violation with opportunity to cure by code enforcement, the way to do that is to go through law enforcement, through the sheriff, and have them uh, handle it under section 62.1105 and 102-27, which provide for those fines that I mentioned. Commissioner Fisher, then yeah. Commissioner Bullen. Well, I think if you're illegally doing something, you do go in and shut them down. And I, I use UPS. Uh, I don't know when last time you sent something through UPS, and my packaging cost hasn't gone down at all um, during this time of year. <laughs> so if they're saving money, it's sure not saving it to the customer. Um, so anyway, can I ask you a question, though, Mr. Wims? Yeah. Can you come to the mic, sir, please? Thank you. You, under, you understand today that you're in violation of our code? Or yes. Are your intentions to immediately go where you have these pods and these packages and, and cease and stop? Yes, or move them to a commercial area and get a permit. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, let me have a, ask a follow-up question. Clearly some of those golf carts did not meet uh, the requirements of, of the state law. What are you going to do about that? Because you know you could not see the lights on the back of those trailers, and I saw one of those in my own neighborhood. You could not see the lights on the back. Um, was not properly marked. It should, at that point, I believe, have the orange triangle at a minimum uh, on the trailer. Uh, what are you going to do about the vehicles? I mean, the state, I think, kind of stuck its neck out on behalf of clearly, you know, big delivery companies, but. There was no compliance. So I, I, what are you going to do about that issue? All the golf carts that we use are in compliance with the state statutes that were passed. The statute says for the, uh, for the trailers what we had passed in Seminole County that Mr. Mason showed you said lights or reflective tape. The, golf, the, car, the trailers have reflective tape on them. We're not in a position to go out and, and violate you know, a, a state statute that was put in place. Uh, as I stated earlier, we've been doing this for years and years and years. It was never a problem until recently, and unfortunately, uh, we drug our own personal issues on your, uh, into your commission. I apologize for that, um, but well, we'll, I, we'll be in compliance. Let me, let me separate the two, and you know, clearly we understand that. We, we're not naive, but, but I, we also see that uh, your company has used our neighborhoods for purposes that it was never intended, and, and that has nothing to do with the labor issue. Uh, so my disappointment is is that you do have some really smart attorneys and people who deal with this all the time, and how it got to where it got to is kind of amazing to me because uh, uh, I, I believe you to, to be a quality company. So I, I'm, I'm disappointed that we find ourselves and, and our surrounding counties find ourselves in this kind of mess, if you will. Well, uh, I apologize for that. Again, it was not our position to uh, – we, we sought the approval of the, either, either the homeowners or the homeowners associations. And, uh, you know, until, uh, until this past year, we haven't had any issues across the state. And if we did, we took care of them, addressed them, moved them. And, uh, again, it's, it's unfortunate. I apologize. We will uh, – anything that we have will get moved uh, and be in compliance. Thank you, sir.
Can, let me ask him a question while you're there. I'm glad you're there. Let's talk about the insurance. Under the state legislation, do you have insurance requirements for those golf cars? Absolutely. Okay. Um, They're insured, I promise you. And, yeah, and, and it's not by State Farm, is that what you said? No, no. It's not by State Farm, but I guarantee you they, it's covered under policy. Yeah. And, and, and the reason I ask that, if there's an unfortunate accident, if, say, I'm driving down and a golf cart hits me and injures me, that'll be covered, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and one quick thing, because there's a misconception about the employees, and my wife worked for you. She started as a preloader when we were in college. That's a tough job, by the way. Anybody <laughs> that came through the UPS ranks, I applaud them. Um, the seasonal employees still get hired for preload, and what was the other position? Local sort, preload, local sort, and, and, and driver, driver helpers. helpers. Driver, driver, driver helpers, jumpers, mm -hmm. I guess they used to call them. Yes. So you're still going to hire those positions even if you didn't have this provision by state statute, correct, for seasonal work? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you all for, for coming this evening and, and bringing this to our attention. I just want to say a special thank you to Anna Johnson. Uh, the research she's done, I almost want to hire her as an extra staff person. Uh, but to, to comment on Commissioner Amatini, you had talked about the money. I have a complete listing of all the locations that are in violation and who and what and their phone number, their birth date. Oh, yeah, I'm just kidding. But we're looking at $100, $180, $65, the whole list of what they've been paid to do this service. Thank you very much for this. Yeah. And, and one, one point I'd like to make. Uh, my neighborhood, the one I saw, it was they were loading it at dark and uh, not at the house, but at, at a, a, a property just up the street. So, for him to go to wherever he had to go, he was in a truck or in a vehicle that was unlighted. So, so they are not following daylight rules, and they weren't properly lighted for nighttime. So, if you would get that message out, because somebody is going to get hurt under those circumstances. Okay, thank you. Okay, Commissioner. I'm sorry, because there was some question among staff as to how to enforce these particular violations. Um, staff has asked for a motion with direction to enforce the business tax receipt violations and zoning code violations if they persist uh, through contact with the sheriff's office and enforcement by the available fines as uh, were discussed earlier in the meeting. Okay. I'll make that motion. All right. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion by Commissioner Boleyn, second by Commissioner uh, Fisher. I guess, are we going to send folks out tomorrow, or we, 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 have, we have had a commitment to, to do the right thing, so I, uh -huh. Monday. Give, give, them, give them seven days to clean it up, uh, or, or no, I'm not five, five generous, days, three uh, days, I don't know, three days? Okay. Uh, well, I, I would say Monday. Yeah. I mean, you, you got get, get the, getting the pods out of the neighborhood. You mean you got tomorrow's Friday? You got to call them. So you got to. You mean, I think they could, could move it before Monday or Tuesday of next week, probably realistically. Okay. okay. And, and with a commitment, you're not going to continue the bad practice to empty the pod that may have stuff in there. Uh, that, that's the other thing is that mm -hmm. if the pods are loaded with material and now they're going to have they're going to use you know continue the practice that we didn't want. I, I'd like could we ask Mr. Williams to real us again? How, how do you how do you plan on come on back? Uh, customer packages. How do you plan on, on approaching uh, removal of the pods or getting them into locations that would be uh, permittable? Legal. Uh, we'll have to go back and identify where all the locations are, where they're at, and identify if there's an alternate location, uh, contact the pod company, get it moved, get the golf cart moved, um, and, get, and have a permit pulled before we can, uh, we can do that. I mean, that's not something okay. I can do in 24 hours. Can I do it in a couple of days? Yes. I've given you my, 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 my commitment as, a, as an organization that we're going to get it taken care of. By Tuesday of next week be fine, sir? Well, what about Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Well, Commissioner this... Fisher asked, asked staff how fast it will take for them to turn around permits. I would hate to put, I mean, he, maybe he could do it by Tuesday, but what if staff would have a backlog problem? So I don't, I mean, I don't want him to meet he us. Has, he has a facility in Rockledge. He can house it out of there. He doesn't have okay. to take it somewhere but, but, but I also think it's a question of getting the illegal ones moved as opposed to, you know, we are not going to go after you when you've got it in a location that would be permittable and we just haven't processed the permit. I think the key thing is is that when it's in a, in a neighborhood versus where it can be permitted. And I'll second the motion. He can move them by Tuesday. Oh, I have a further. <laughs> it's my understanding then, let's say on Suntry Boulevard, you have a pod that's completely booked full right now of packages. There wouldn't be any in there right now. They're delivered throughout the course of the day, and it should be empty right now. So you will not other, deliver other any more tomorrow to that pod? No, ma'am. Okay. But I still, no more but deliveries I still, to any pods starting tomorrow? They're in residential areas. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. And, 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 he'll, and he'll start the process of getting them moved out, and they'll be gone by Tuesday next week. Is what he's saying, right? Yes. Did you, that gives him more than a couple days. Okay. 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 So, so that second includes out by Tuesday, and, yeah. and, and the business Tuesday. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All Thank those you. in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously.